Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to be focusing on structural unemployment. Here's a chart showing the rate of unemployment in the UK, measured as a percentage of the labour force since 1971. Now, as you can see, there have been some significant increases in unemployment over the last 40 years, particularly in the early 1980s, again in the early 1990s, and during the last recession, with unemployment peaking at 8.5% in 2012. The long-run trend in unemployment, though, looks to be downwards, with each successive peak in unemployment falling over the last three recessions. However, whilst this is welcome news, structural unemployment remains a big supply-side problem for the labour market. So we're going to spend a little bit of time in this topic video thinking about structural unemployment. One aspect of this which is important to recognise is that the rate of unemployment in the UK is not the same across regions. So, for example, in the northeast of England, unemployment in 2015 was 8.1% of the labour force. Now, that's nearly twice what the rate of unemployment was in the southwest and the southeast. Regions such as London, Yorkshire, and Northern Ireland also have high rates of unemployment. And much of the joblessness in those areas can be attributed to structural reasons. The UK economy does have plenty of, un of unfilled job vacancies. In the summer of 2015, there were over 700,000 unfilled vacancies. A recognition that the UK economy has been growing more quickly in recent times and employers have been looking to take people on. However, the fact that with unemployment at about 1.6 million and yet there are 700,000 unfilled vacancies, again, this suggests there are some structural problems in the labour market in getting people to fill these available jobs. So what causes structural unemployment? I think there's two sides to look at here. Firstly, the pattern of employment or the pattern of jobs in our labour market necessarily changes over time. So we see significant changes in the pattern of employment uh, because of a, a range of factors. In the UK, for example, we've seen the long run decline of heavy manufacturing, such as uh, shipbuilding and coal and, and steel and other aspects. This is a process known as deindustrialization, and many, many full-time jobs used to be had in these industries. Linked to this has been a, a shift towards the service economy. That's partly because the income elasticity of demand for services is a little bit higher than the demand for manufactured goods generally. So there's been a shift in the pattern of employment towards the service sector and away from traditional manufacturing. Allied to this is the impact that automation is having on our labour demand. So the extent to which in many industries, including manufacturing, car making for example, but also extending to online banking and supermarkets, the extent to which robotics for example and other forms of technology might be replacing jobs. Now this whole issue is open to debate. There are economists out there who believe, with evidence, that automation creates more jobs than it destroys. But undoubtedly, it does lead to a change in the structure of the UK labour market. And there are other factors at work as well. We've seen in some industries a growing percentage of demand met by imports, as production, uh, as consumers, for example, favour cheaper, perhaps better competition from overseas, especially, for example, products made from the BRIC countries, including India and China. Structural unemployment is also the part result of a growing regional divide in economic performance. There are long-term divisive factors, for example, affecting growth in areas such as Scotland, Northern Ireland and the North East. And we've also seen a shift of production globally. And what tends to happen, of course, is that manufacturing and related industries, they shift to countries that can provide the lowest unit costs. So these are the, some of the causes of structural changes in employment in the labour market. Now the key to understanding structural unemployment is that people who find themselves out of work because of these long-term changes often face significant hurdles to get, getting back into employment. So you can link structural unemployment with labour market failure. In other words, the labour market isn't working efficiently and effectively in matching people to jobs. So let's think about what some of those structural barriers can be 
all of these are factors causing in particular structural unemployment to become if you like embedded into the economy the first point is that there are many skills gaps in a modern economy many of the new jobs require a different set of skills than the ones that traditionally people used to have so it could be the case that people for example made unemployed in in coal mining or shipbuilding or steel or even in less obvious examples such as the the industry making newspapers and video recorders. The people have skills in those industries, but they're not necessarily the skills that the new jobs require. And of course, there could be a significant cost involved in, in retraining. Secondly, uh, another factor causing structural unemployment is the very high price of housing, both to buy and to rent. It's widely, widely agreed in the UK that an unaffordable property is a major barrier to geographical mobility of labour. If one adds to that uh, unreliable and often expensive forms of commuting, this problem is made even worse. Many of the, un many of the unemployed may remain out of work because of some of the disincentive effects created by the tax and welfare system. We'll do a separate topic video on the poverty trap, but for now the basic idea is the people might be uh, able to work, willing to work, and perhaps could work and are offered a job, but the net increase in their income from, let's say, taking a part-time job could be extremely small. And this is because although their gross income will go up, they may lose some benefits and they're also having to start paying uh, income tax and national insurance, so that overall they may only be a little bit better off from taking a job. And we would call that the poverty trap. And linked with that, there are some other barriers to employment in the labour market. Other ways in which structural rigidity in the labour market holds people back from getting a job. In many cases, we're never sure how much, there may be some underlying discrimination. Although it's against the law, employers and firms may discriminate against people based on age and gender, other forms of background. That can't be denied, but of course the scale of this is unsure. Another really important point is that many of those who are structurally unemployed have been out of work for at least a year, and we call those people the long-term unemployed. Whilst many have strong motivation to find work, others may see their skills erode or degradate, and also they may suffer from a loss of motivation because of a failure to find work despite trying. For example, many people who are long-term unemployed find that their networks start to diminish people that they know who are in work and who might be able to find them a job. And this makes it much, much harder for them to get back into the labour market. And the final point is that structural unemployment could be caused by other disincentives. For example, the unemployment trap. People may uh, have a job that they could go to and may be suitable, have the skills for that particular job, but they might be put off by, for example, the cost of childcare or equally the cost of commuting to and from work at unsociable hours. Many of those unfilled job vacancies, for example, could offer relatively low pay and perhaps lack job security. We've seen, for example, the rise of short-term or zero-hours contracts in many parts of the labour market. So this, this slide is all about the structural barriers to finding work. Most of the long-term unemployed, most of the involuntary structurally unemployed want to work. Indeed, many are desperate to find work and have spent a long time trying. But there are barriers in the way which can sometimes prevent them filling those job vacancies. And this is a major supply side problem in the UK, particularly, not, not exclusively, among younger workers. Again, we'll do a separate topic video on youth unemployment. But for the moment, it's worth noting that the rate of youth unemployment, that's workers aged between 18 and 24 years, has been above 10% since the year 2000 and rose to nearly 20% in 2012. This became a major policy issue at the time and remains so even though the rate of youth unemployment has dropped to just under 14% in 2015. Keep in mind that 14% is still two and a half times the average unemployment in the UK economy. So this has been a look at some of the supply side problems that cause high rates of structural unemployment in the labour market. Thanks for joining me on this one. Hope to see you again sometime soon.